Okay, I know I'm being a success now because people are asking for videos. Um, one of the requests I've had from the upper sixth has been to do one on uh, cell division, which uh, was part of the lower sixth course. This is actually part of component two. So um, even if you studied it last year, you're still going to be examined on it uh, as part of your component two. So I'm going to start off with mitosis as a process of cell division. Oh, look at that, new sharpie. Um, mitosis. This is a way of making one cell into two genetically identical cells. And there are some key processes that help that to happen. When you're talking about mitosis, you always need to be talking about genetically identical. No use just saying the same identical. Be really specific about that. It is genetically identical. So why do we need to do mitosis? Well, we need to do it to make uh, new cells for growth. So you probably don't want to think about this, but you started off as one cell when your mum and dad's gametes fused, which you probably really don't want to think about. Um, and then, you know, you, you've got in, in millions of cells and they all need to have the same genetic information inside them. So making new cells for growth. You also, you, your cells die and, and they, you know, they get damaged and, uh, and destroyed and you need to replace them. So we call that process cell renewal. So if you think, well, again, you probably don't want to think about this too much, but when you eat something, it, it scrapes off the cells that line your cheeks and line your esophagus, and they need re replacing. They, you need to replace those cells. So cell renewal, and that can be continuous. Your skin, for example, is continually renewing itself. And bits are dying and falling off, mm, nice, and, uh, and you're replacing the cells from mitosis underneath the skin. Talking of skin, we also need it to repair tissues. Now this is another key distinction. We don't repair cells. If a cell gets damaged, you kill it off and use its products. You don't repair it. So if you puncture a cell membrane, it doesn't repair itself cell dies. So we're talking about tissue repair. If you cut yourself, your mitosis will replace those cells, replace those damaged cells and heal the tissue. Um, and one thing not useful to say at this point, one thing not useful that you need to know about uh, mitosis is that it is involved with cancer and tumour formation. So usually your rate of cell replacement and cell growth is pretty well regulated. Uh, associated with oncogenes, which you'll come across again when we do uh, genetics and inheritance, oncogenes can disrupt that process. So um, usually if a if critical processes in the cell are disrupted in any way, then that cell will die. It's called apoptosis. And oncogenes actually let those cells live and proliferate. So this is really an uncontrolled mitosis. This is not a good thing. So you're making more cells than you would normally, which is going to form a tumour. Uh, the good news is that not all tumours are malignant. Some are benign and uh, don't cause too many problems and can be removed quite easily. Um, and some are malignant and that means that those cells will spread around the body and proliferate in other areas of the body. Um, so, that's dealt with the sort of purposes of it. And we've got two things to do now. You need to know the phases of mitosis. I was going to do something clever with pipe cleaners but I've decided to draw it instead. Um, and you need to be aware of the root tip squash experiment. So let's start with the uh, phases. 
So you need to be able to recognise mitosis from diagrams and from uh, pictures of the root tip squash. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do the diagrams. So um, a cell doing its normal thing, making proteins, whatever it normally does, has a nucleus with chromatin in that we can't see. So, chromatin, remember, is made of DNA plus histones. Now, if you could see chromatin, it would look like beads wrapped around, uh, beads of histones with the DNA sort of wrapped around it. In interphase, your chromosomes are unwound and so you can't see them. If you could see them and you could line them up, you would see that they're in pairs that are equal in length and in, a, in genetically speaking, they have the same genes on them and in the same order, but not necessarily the same forms of the genes. These pairs are our homologous pairs, so this would be one homologous pair. So you've effectively got two copies of every chromosome, and the reason for that, and again you probably don't really want to think about this, is that you inherit one of each pair from your mum and one of each pair from your dad. We call those maternal and paternal chromosomes. So what's that got to do with interphase? So, if a cell is going to divide, and only if it is going to divide, one of the key events in interphase is DNA replication. So that's that semi-conservative model. So instead of having one strand of DNA making a chromosome, we will now have two strands of DNA making a chromosome. Obviously, as well as all that, we're going to have to do a bit of protein synthesis in interphase. And we're going to have to make a bit of ATP. And we might have to replicate some of our organelles so that we've got enough to split between two cells at the end. Uh, so organelles. So interphase, longest phase for definite. Can't really see any chromosomes. If we could, they'd look like that. But it's not resting. It's doing all this other stuff. And this only if a cell is going to divide. So, when do we actually get to see the chromosomes? We get to see them in prophase. Prophase is an appearing phase. So in prophase, our next phase, so this is phase two, our chromosomes are going to appear. And the reason for that is the chromatin is going to condense. And I'm just going to do the nuclear membrane now as a dotted line because the end of prophase is signified when the nuclear membrane disappears. So, in this phase we've replicated our DNA. So our big chromosome, purple one, is now going to be made out of two molecules of DNA. So it's going to appear as a sort of a double structure. We've still got our big teal coloured chromosome. Again, as two pieces of DNA, we've got our little one made of teal and our little purple chromosome. And they all appear as double structures. Now obviously we have to have some words to describe those as double structures. So we still call them chromosomes. They are still chromosomes. These are chromosomes. These are chromosomes. These are double structures. So we refer to the two bits as sister, because they're identical, chromatids. 
and they're joined together by the central area, central centromere. So here in prophase we've got the chromatin condensing the chromosomes are visible how do they appear? they appear as two chromatids joined by a centromere. And at the end, a nuclear membrane. Disappears. So that's prophase. Now from there the chromosomes then start to sort of shuffle around and they shuffle around into a particular place and when they get there we call it metaphase. So remember these are continuous phases so if you watch any other videos uh, which I can recommend that you do they'll talk about things like early prophase, prophase, late prophase, early metaphase metaphase, late metaphase, but it's a continuum. So the chromosomes are sort of moving around. We're going to just take the sort of, you know, metaphase, the middle bit. So metaphase, the M stands for middle. By this time, the nuclear membrane has completely disappeared. And in addition to that, in animal cells, and only in animal cells, not in plant cells, uh, I'll do our animal cells in, I'll do red. Um, we have these paired cylinders, the centrioles. They've moved to opposite ends of the cell and their job is to make a structure called the spindle. And they need to make one spindle fibre running across the cell might be some asters which are the sort of other ends of the spindle and we call these the poles of the cell so just like we've got the north pole and the south pole the cell has poles that's where the centrioles are at the poles of the cell so quite a lot of terminology in this topic really so where do our lovely chromosomes move to? They move to the middle. And so here we've got our big purple one, still joined by its centromere. Our little purple one, still joined by its centromere. We've got our big, again, they'll line up in any old order, they don't care. Doesn't really matter. Our big and our small. Um, chromosomes. So here, when you're describing, you would say the chromosomes attach to the spindle at the equator of the cell. And again, if you imagine planet Earth, we've got the North Pole, the South Pole, and the ring that goes around the middle is called the equator. So these are lined up on the middle of the cell in the equator, and they're attached by the centromere. So again, you need to be able to perhaps draw these. Um, if you're drawing, my suggestion would be that you follow the guidelines that are given to you in the uh, in the question stem. So if they've got two pairs of chromosomes, that's what you're going to draw. Two pairs of chromosomes. Don't put six or twelve or twenty-three in. 
just put the ones that you've shown. If they've got a big one and a small one, make them big and small, make them look like pears. If they, you know, coloured in half, you know, stripes or dots to distinguish them, that's exactly what you do. You do what the question has on it.